Hey everyone, and welcome to the first episode in a new series that I'm going to do where we create a hero from the ground up and program it in the Overwatch Workshop system. So this is really exciting. I've gotten a lot of requests for this, so I'm going to jump right into it. And what I decided that I want to do is rather than picking something and having my own personal bias, I'm going to let randomness and the dice decide what I'm going to do. So I have a four-sided dice here, and I'm going to first decide what role I want the character that we will make to serve, tank, support, or damage, and then I'm going to decide the typical play style that we're going to set for this hero. So if you're interested in following along with this, this will be a great tutorial for you to learn basically everything there is to know about the new workshop system. So stay tuned. So I got my die here. I'm gonna make my first roll and I got a one. So I'm gonna do, if I get a four, I'll just re-roll. Um, so we are going to be doing a tank. I was hoping for not a tank because I feel like tanks are hard because shields are hard to make in the system, but I feel like it's still possible. I just want to check that out. Um, next for our play style, we're going to roll again. Looks like I got one again. So we will be making a dive tank. This is going to probably be kind of tricky, but um, I think we can come up with a good idea for this. So um, I'm going to jump over to a new screen where we're going to lay out a few abilities and some ideas and concepts for what we're going to do for our new custom made dive tank hero in the Overwatch Workshop system. Okay, let's get into conceptualizing the abilities, passives, primary fires, different things for our new dive tank hero. So, I want to start by explaining dive tanks a little bit. So there are two types of tanks. There are dive tanks, and then there are shield tanks. So shield tanks are very straightforward. They provide a shield, and then people behind the shield are safe from people outside of the shield. From that line of sight angle. Dive tanks are a bit more complicated, and I want to put this on here so we know what direction we need to go. So dive tanks, on the other hand, they have, say there's two snipers, uh, Hanzo and a Widowmaker. We have our dive tank, say Winston, and maybe we have D.Va. So Winston does have a shield, but it wouldn't really make sense to force people to stay around his shield because it's not really optimal for them and it's it's gone it's gone in a second it does provide line of sight angles from all directions but it's not nearly as good as say taking a reinhardt instead what winston tries to do is he jumps on dps so that this dps can no longer get a good line of sight because winston's in the way and i gotta deal with this winston now so now the people here are twice as safe because they only have one threat so you could maybe send your other dive tank over, or you could send your dive tank here to kill that person and then have Winston jump over. So it's kind of like a, um, it's using the movement here to provide protection for these people so that they can go in and get different kinds of kills. So we need to make sure that we have several things. We need to have a movement ability. We need to have a way to protect our teammates. We need a way to protect ourselves. And then a damage shorts source that it's kind of low, but not too low and more tactical. So I'll have this tactical um, and like CC. You know what I mean? Uh, crowd control. A lot of the tanks all have crowd control because they need to basically make good decisions that will help their DPS out rather than getting their own kills. So movement ability. Um, Winston has his leap and D.Va has her jump jets. Bo both are very similar because they can get into basically any part of the map very quickly. 
And that's the thing about dive tanks. It's like, I'm needed over here because the widow's over here. And if I give her any second, she's going to get a headshot. So fast movement um, is something that we need to think about. Um, protecting ourselves. This is done in a few ways. There's either an ability that can help other people as well. We can either combine these or we can separate them. D.Va and Winston combine these things with using their defense matrix or their bubble, which other people can benefit. Hammond, however, um, I know he's called Wrecking Ball, but he's, he's called Hammond, let's just be real, just protects himself and doesn't really protect his team, minus the fact that he's so annoying that people are just looking at him all the time. Low damage, and what I mean by this is, like, there's no burst damage, so no burst. Burst is a thing that you see in just DPS. The total damage output can be high because if we use our tactical abilities to set up for a good positioning, say when Winston goes and he tickles, cleaves, damages the entire death ball as it's walking in, he dealt high damage because of the tacticalness of his positioning, not because he's just bursty. Also, we need to, aside from this, think of a good theme for our hero. And the only thing that's really coming to me is a theme from a different game, um, which honestly is a good way to start creating your own hero. If you th can think of a good character from a different game and apply it in, a, in an Overwatch context, it becomes a whole different character because the context is so different that it's, it's different enough to be considered different. A lot of heroes are inspired from, say, League of Legends or d and I'm going to take something from d and one of my favorite games, um, called The Barbarian. So, The Barbarian is a character who deals a lot of damage uh, primarily and also is just good at anything to do with strength. So the thing about D&D is it's very generic, so if you're good at strength, you're good at attacking, you're also good at lifting things and all that stuff. One thing that is very tactical for a barbarian who's very strengthy to do is grapple other enemy heroes, or other, en or they're called monsters in D&D. And you can basically run up to the biggest monster and stop them from doing anything. Let's make a stop sign. Which is very tactical because now his damage is drastically lowered and you can kill off all the other tinier monsters and then go back to this guy and kill him as a team. That's a really cool idea because with Winston and D.Va, they primarily jump on squishy characters, but what if you could dive on a tank and restrain him temporarily so that you mess up that whole dynamic and then you can maybe get a few kills, put them out of position, and then clean up the tank at the end of the fight. So I kind of want our big ability protecting um, other people to be a grapple. We'll see if that works, see if it's too broken. We can always go back and rethink it. So going back to this idea, that barbarians aren't seen to jump too far. I think sometimes in D&D you can make your barbarian fly, but I don't really want a flying hulk. I kind of want a sprint type ability. I want it so that you can trigger an ability and maybe double your speed for a few seconds and you can just run through things and maybe push people back a little bit. So we have a little bit of CC as we run through, and we can just make a beeline towards any character that we want. So rather than leaping, we have sprinting. Um, protecting ourselves, because this isn't one of the Diva Winston's um, abilities where we both benefit and the other team, ben or our team benefits from it, we need to have a way to protect ourselves. So we're going to need some sort of damage resistance somewhere this can come from shields but i kind of like the idea of base damage resistance kind of like that whole roadhog type thing where 
It, it depends on like the design and the art of your character. Hammond gets shields because he's in a robot, but uh, Hog gets damage resistance because it's just him. He's just becoming more beefy temporarily, and that's that's character design. In, in the end, they're almost the same thing. So low damage, I think I just want him to go around and slap things or maybe have a hammer, but hammer is already in the game. Slapping is in the game with like Winston's ult, but it might be cool if our hero uses the Winston model, but you're just always ulting, but we like lower the damage and make our own abilities so that it's not like you're just always ulting. Um, tactical is with this grapple, with this CC, um, with the slap that maybe has a little bit of CC. So we got tactical, we got check on most things. So let's go through and fully define the different abilities we have. So I think we need a melee type thing. So we're just going to have our slap that, what does Reinhardt deal? He deals like 90 damage, right? And that's to any character around. So we might as well do something kind of similar. Let's go with 75 damage and it can cleave, meaning it can hit multiple targets in the same area. Secondary fire, I don't think I want anything yet. I might come back to that. Our ability one, meaning our shift ability, if you're on PC, will be our sprint ability. And the details of that will be we maybe double our movement speed for four seconds. Why not? And then we ca could have clip booping. Like when you're charging as Reinhardt and you hit somebody, but you don't pin them. You kind of send them flying a little bit. That seems pretty good. I don't want damage resistance here yet. I want to save that for... Um, maybe a passive ability so we don't want to give him straight damage resistance because that would just be weird we might as well just give him more health at that point um but we need something so i'm thinking so i'm thinking we start simple we already have some interesting abilities we could do like a berserker not like he deals more damage. I don't know what this is called, but um, Enrage or something like that, where uh, lower health, that's an arrow, equals higher damage resistance. And you might say, why not just give him more health? And the answer to that is you can be more resourceful with your health pool if you keep it low. So he will be taking a lot of damage, but he'll take less damage, meaning he'll charge ultimates on the other team slower if he's at low damage, and his healers won't have to worry about him as much if he's low health. So it might be tactical to stay low health, and we could consider giving him more damage the lower health he has. Because I think people have talked about this idea um, for a while, and I wanted to see what that actually looked like in the game of Overwatch. So ability two, which is our E ability if we're on PC, I want this to be our grapple because we don't have that yet. So grapple, it'll have one of those um, easy lock uh, reticle things, you know, like uh, Brigida's frisbee thing or uh, projected barrier. It was something that's easy, discord, you know. So here's how I'll phrase it. I don't want them to be hacked, per se. I want them to disable movement abilities, kind of like they're in grav. And also they can't move, so no actual movement. So this is good because maybe you could headshot them from afar. Um, that could get really cool because it would give snipers like Baptiste, Soldier, and Widowmaker something to do at lower ranks because they're really popular at high ranks because people miss less often. But if 
you played around the style where like, okay, I'll go charge this guy and then just headshot him a few times. Then it'll give something to do at low ranks. So we have our ultimate ability. This is your Q if you're on PC. Um, I have an idea for this. So when we look at this, this is giving me questions. Like, usually in Overwatch, you want to stay topped off. That's always kind of a thing. Because it it just makes your odds of winning better because there's so much burst damage. What if we had a failsafe for that, where when you die, you can hit Q to res yourself with half health. This is kind of like Relentless Endurance from D&D. &D. Um, so basically, it, it'll make you worry less about your health pool. You'll be like, I have my ult. I'm going to go in, make sure I get this guy. And if I die, it, it'll be fine. I, I plan that to happen this fight. And that might be cool because this will become a scary tank where the play style, this is something you want to always consider, is... Um, it's kind of like, I'm coming to get you, and I'm not scared. So that, in itself, seems like a very scary tank that I don't want charging at me. So let's go ahead and jump into the workshop mode. I'll make this another video, so this is the end of this video, but we're gonna jump right in and we're gonna make this character. If you have any questions or you have any comments or you think I should make a quick change before I start making it, please leave it in the comment section below. I won't be making the character till probably tomorrow, so if you're quick to respond, um, please let me know. I also have a quick announcement before I leave. If anyone wants to help me play test, if I get enough comments of people saying, I want to help play test this character and help develop it, I will try and set something up, maybe a live stream, maybe a Discord, maybe just plan a time and then use it through the chat. But I'd like to see you guys help me out with this. So let me know in the comment section below. If you haven't already, please leave a like and a subscribe. It really helps me out. But until next time, thanks and have a great day.